right. Um, so where were we? Um, we started looking at the wallpaper patterns and we looked at what like three or four different patterns. I asked you to print out the uh, the wallpaper pattern flowchart. So we're going to work with that today. Does everyone have one of those? Can you um, can you print one out maybe right now if you don't have one? Yeah, so just um, have that ready. Uh, you can also find something very similar in the textbook, um, although it's it's smaller. It's on uh, page 163. This is um, and other online sources will have uh, this kind of thing too. But uh, I sent you that PDF with maximum size, and that's that's the one I would recommend printing out. But it is in the uh, it is in the book as well. I don't know if you heard that, but see, we got blasters, laser blasters, and all kinds of crazy blasters here going tonight. All right, so we're going to use this flowchart to identify more patterns today. And that's pretty much all we're doing. And next week, as you know, is uh, spring break, so we don't have class. Um, I'm not um, I'm not advocating working too hard or anything like that but if you do come up with questions you just email me uh, we're not having class but I'm open to any kind of questions um, I, I think that if you can you should definitely take a break uh, from um, schoolwork if you know even if it's just for a day or two you know you don't have to do nothing all all break, but uh, I would I would recommend you you just chill out a little bit. It's it's just uh, you know it's our time and and for for some people um, it's actually uh, a lot of work just to get through the day. So I I would um, I hope to hear a lot of relaxing stories when we get back on uh, on the Tuesday after the break. That would be the 6th of April, 6th of April. So next class, uh, next class is April 6th. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to actually um, promote this chilling out by not giving you any formal homework or project or anything like that. I, I'm just going to um, go through um, patterns and I'm hoping that you walk around a little bit with that flow chart and when you see something that has a repeating pattern um, uh, you're most welcome guys my, my pleasure so I, I did what I, I was gonna do something like a photograph project but we'll do it next week you know it's it, it'll be fine uh, and you'll have some time to just kind of start adjusting your eyes to looking at those rotations and uh, and the rest and um, the first project that we're going to do which is I'm not assigning it today but whenever whenever I do assign it it really just has to do with the rotations so you don't actually have to even go through the whole thing so we, we kind of get our feet wet with just uh, thinking about rotations and uh, you'll be taking pictures of things okay so I'll tell you more about that in two weeks. Today, we're going to go back to that PowerPoint, and uh, we're going to go through the rest of it, and just uh, just keep at it because that's that's how we're, how we're going to learn. So I'm going to just pull up the. Um, PowerPoint, where is it now? Let's see. Okay, here. Oh, no. Okay, 
here we so this is the PowerPoint that I've uh, already posted on on Blackboard and you can follow along um, with the flowchart um, I'm hoping that uh, many of you will participate today as we go through more and more of these I'm going to ask you to participate more uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of putting people on the spot but just know that you will be contributing to the discussion um, as, as we move forward. Okay, so here is the um, flowchart, and I hope you have that printed out. And I'm going to now go back to where we left off last time. Oh, we didn't do this one. Yeah, I skipped this one. Okay, so this is a good place to start. Oops, I'm, I'm already showing you the what's going on here. All right, so here we have this weird pattern. It's just totally abstract, although they do look a little bit like ducks or caterpillars or, or something. Um, but um, let's, let's talk about what's going on here. What do you think about the rotation? Anything, uh, anything to report? as far as the rotations. Mateo says, no, you're right. Yeah, there is nothing. Uh, you might say, wait a minute. Some of those little ducks, they're not really ducks, but uh, I'll show you what I mean. Like what if you uh, put a little eyeball here, a little mouth here? It could be like some type of cute little bug or a duck or something. Um, if you put a little wing on this, oh yeah, yeah, that's a duck. Uh, see how easy it is? Um, so you might say, wait a minute, but some of those are upside down. Doesn't that mean that there's a rotation? Not necessarily. It, this is see this is uh, where it gets fun. I'll, I'll show you an example. If this this is the simplified version of the duck. If there was a rotation, then it would go like this, and I'll I'll put a little red dot where the rotation center would be. Okay. That's not what's going on here. And Mateus, you're absolutely right, 100%. It's a glide reflection. So there's no rotation. There's no reflection. But there is a glide reflection. I usually mark the glide reflections with um, dashed lines. And once you draw the line in, you start kind of seeing, oh yeah, if if you're here, maybe I'll maybe I'll draw some more uh, faces over here. Uh, here is this uh, this friendly guy, like so. He's not. Um, yeah, thank you, Sophia. I actually just took uh, the roster check, but I'll 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 add you on it. So. Notice how, oops, oops, it's kind of hard to draw for me. Notice how the wing is on the right side, both for the birds that's right side up and upside down. The wing is on the same side, on the right side. For me, it's, it's my window side, okay? That means that it can't be a rotation because if, if it was a rotation, it would, you know, one, would be pointing to the window and one would be pointing to the door in my case. One's pointing left, one's pointing right. In this case, they're both both of the wings are on the right side and the and the, the animal is facing left. So that that's what a glide does. It it flips it and then translates it. So that's a glide. So if, if this is no rotation, no reflection, 
but yes, a glide, then what would you call this pattern? Somebody other than Mateus, please. PG, perfect. PG, yeah. That's how you read that chart. You, you, you start with the rotation. The next question is always the same. So the first two questions are always the same for any pattern. What's the smallest rotation? Are there any reflections? And then things are different. And then in this case, you have a question, is there a glide reflection? And since we answered yes, you end up with a PG pattern. So this is an example of a no rotation kind of pattern. Hey, I'm going to turn off my video because sometimes uh, my uh, Wi-Fi connection is not, not that strong. But um, so, so sorry if you don't see a talking head. All right, this one we did already. This was the uh, threefold. Um, so this is a no, no, that was a no rotation pattern. This is a 120 degree pattern. Is that what you're asking, uh, Mateus? This is a six fold pattern that we did. Now, what about this one? Now, it looks familiar. You've seen it before. So let's just start with the, um, let's just start with the rotation. Any ideas? So you're, this this is kind of the the big moment. A, you know, every time you start analyzing one of these patterns, you want to get that first question right because if you don't, the rest of it is going to be uh, basically all for naught. Uh, so you you get half the credit for getting the rotation correctly, and then the rest of the credit, the other half, uh, by answering all the other questions correctly. Okay, Fiona, we have seahorse pattern. What do you think about the Would it be 180? It would be. Frank got it too. Good stuff, Frank. And I am going to go ahead and draw some rotation centers. I like this pattern because he actually left some of these rotation centers. Do you remember that uh, midpoint rotation that we did? Uh, and, and that's the maneuver that this particular one has. Well, it ends up that that midpoint is a two-fold rotation center. But also, all of the vertices are two-fold rotation centers. All of these points. So all the vertices of the parallelogram, as well as the midpoints of the shorter, shorter sides, top and bottom sides. All right. So we're in the 180 degree branch of of the um, of the float chart. Where do we go next? The question is about reflections. So as second question is always any reflections. Okay, we've got uh, two to one, no. Mateos, Frank, and Skyler. Okay, so no's are winning so far. Let me see. Is there any point, I mean, I'm sorry, is there anywhere on this line where I could draw a line and it would be a reflection line. Well, definitely not there. How about how about uh, somewhere else? How about there? No. Yeah, no, no. There, there really isn't. Even if I just follow his lines that he drew, these uh, uh, grid lines. No, that really, there really isn't. Uh, we don't have any uh, reflections. And um, you know, about half the patterns have the reflection, a little more than half actually. 
let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of 17 patterns do not have it, and 10 out of 17 have reflections. So reflection patterns are a little bit more common, um, but it's fairly close to half and half. Anyway, uh, this one does not have reflection. So then the next question is, is there a glide reflection? Yes or no? So now about the glides. Do you see, and, and the way to look at it. Yes. Uh, the way to look at it. So we, we may have it. Some people say yes, some people say no. The way to track that is just pick a motif, an, a, an appearance of a motif. So this, this white horse, uh, I'll just pick that because it's in the middle. So is there anywhere, it might be to the side of it, you know, it might be going this way or it might be going this way vertically. Is there anywhere where this, the horse would be, like if I'm, if I'm thinking of the horizontal glide, uh, if that happens, there would be a horse, I wish I could draw it, but basically you know, here would be the uh, uh, tail of it and it would be facing, <laughs> whoops, <laughs> please don't quote me on this. <laughs> um, this, this thing, this horse would be facing the same way as my white horse where the tail is up, so it's upside down, facing right. There's no horse like that, no seahorse like that. Now, if it was a vertical glide, so I kind of have to check both directions. Um, now it can't be P1 because we already located a uh, rotation. So yeah, this is gonna be a P2 because if, if, if there was a vertical glide, I'm just kind of checking all the boxes here. Um, if there was a vertical glide, uh, and I'm looking at the white horse, it doesn't matter which horse you look at, you're going to get the same result. So there would be a horse that's facing left and right side up. So this is uh, this is this awesome looking horse. Okay, <laughs> facing left right side up. Notice that you don't have a horse like that. So you could you could think about it like this. Glide reflection, and this is something to keep in mind. Glide reflection is a type of reflection. So it would it would change what we call handedness of an object. So if that white horse, that original white horse, if this white horse is let's call it uh, left-handed, then if there's a glide reflection, then some of these horses, in fact, half of them, would be right-handed. But that's not what's happening. These are all of the same handedness. They're just rotated. There's no, there's no mirror image of that horse anywhere. See, if there's a reflection or a glide reflection, then you would see a mirror image of this horse somewhere. In fact, half of them would be mirror images and half would be original. You can think left-handed, right-handed. And that's not what's happening. They're all they're all the same. You know, forget the color. These are all, I guess you could say, left-handed horses or, or of the same handedness. Uh, so yes, like uh, many of you already noticed or, or analyzed, this would then be a P2. 180 degree rotation, no reflection, no glide reflection, P2. We have a question. question? Yeah, yeah, please. Um, can we go back to the ducks? I just don't understand why that was a PG if there was no rotation. Yeah. So notice that there is a pattern that's called PGG. Maybe you're mixing it up with that. The first category, the top of the, the flow chart is the none category, no rotation. Right? You have to go somewhere. Like when, 
when we asked what's the smallest rotation, no rotation has to be an option. So that, that's what we have here. So if you go up to the top of the flowchart, no rotation and no reflection, but yes, glide reflection, that, that's a PG. Got it. Okay, I didn't know that none could be an option, but now I see it. Yeah, right. yeah. so we have five different categories. Uh, we have the no rotation, we have the 180, the 120, the 90, and 60. And any pattern is going to belong to one of those, and, and none is um, an option. Okay, here we go. More Escher stuff. Escher... Uh, made these awesome tilings, and, and it's it's fun to look at these as um, examples for the wallpaper patterns, uh, as well as we did, you know, from a few weeks ago on how to make them. But uh, here we have this lizard pattern. Any stabs at the uh, rotation? Sixty. Oh, no more. Yes, Catherine. Yes, Mateos. One twenty. Hold on. Let me close this door. This this baby whining. So it's um it's a one twenty. And uh, let me draw some rotation centers. Like, do you see, for instance, where these heads come together? There's this uh, trio of, of heads that belong to these lizards. And then you'll start seeing different places where um, you have three things coming together, like, like here, for instance. And also here. These are all threefold rotation centers. And when I say a threefold rotation, I am talking about 120 degree rotation. So last time I, I made these equivalencies, um, 180 degree is a twofold. You can just think 360 divided by two is 180, 360 divided by three is 120, and so on. So this is a threefold pattern. And then the next question is, as always, is there a reflection? Is there any line anywhere that acts as a mirror line? I don't see one anywhere. Nope, you guys are right. Yep, Isis, uh, everybody. Um, nope, no reflections. And in fact, that's the end of the line for this inquiry uh, because that's all you got. So P3, that's right. So I'm going to just toss that over here, P3. So once again, you can see that the lizards are all kind of the same that they're not mirror images uh, of each other. If you pick any lizard and see how the head is kind of like uh, looking to the right a little bit. You know, if you follow this the, from the tail, uh, which is pointing to the left, and you go to towards the head and you see the head turning to the right, they're all like that. They're exactly the same. You know, never mind the color, the shape. And, and where that head is turning, it's all the same. So they they share the handedness. That means no reflection, no glide reflection. So glide reflection will produce that other handedness. Um, it's just not quite as easy to see as a regular reflection, reflection because it, it includes that uh, translation. But anyway, yeah, P3. And I'm hoping some some people will already start seeing a little bit, um, you know, maybe a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Because at, at, at first, this seems daunting. 
and complicated and it's like you maybe your eyes are not going to get used to looking at uh, these things with this kind of uh, critical analysis but maybe maybe you'll get there I, in fact i know you will um, and there there are some nuances with some patterns and i'm not worried about those nuances just now i'm really just working with you to narrow down the rotation mainly at this point so that, that that's our first concern and honestly that's the hardest part if you can start seeing the rotations in these things then you're you're well on your way okay so this one uh, um, this is not quite as obvious as it may first seem. Taylor, Yuteng, yes. Uh, there's rotation, and, and it is 60. Now, um, Yuteng, would you mind jotting down a, a rotation center for us? A 60 degree rotation center. You could pick a nice bright color so we can see. Do 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 do, 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 do. Wait, something happened. Um, those points are rotation centers, but so you drew three, three pictures, or three rotation centers. Only one of them, this this one, on the bottom is a sixty. And, and let's let's talk about these for a second. So this one here is a 120. This one is a 120. But this is the only one that's 60. So oh, so other people I don't know who uh, chimed in, but uh, I drew them below. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. It, it's all good. I I love people uh, you know chiming in, and and honestly, this is. One of the coolest things about teaching you with this kind of uh, modality, this this remote uh, modality, because it's like we all have a piece of chalk, even better, colored chalk. And you don't even have to get up off your chair to come to the board. It's wonderful. Uh, this, this is like one of the best things that I um, have found um, that, that everybody can collaborate on the same drawing and um you know if we're looking for silver linings then then there's def definitely one okay so so what's going on here uh this is another example of a situation where you have multiple types of rotation centers and one of them is going to offer the smallest one you see like here i'm i'm, I'm using the red up there so right there is another 60 degree rotation why is it 60 let's count let's count the birds one two three four five six now you might say what are you talking about they all have six birds going around like let's say uh i'm gonna i'm gonna erase this okay uh, what about this one? This um, this one here. One, two. Wait a minute. That's not the same. That next one. Because the white bird had the beak at the uh, at the vertex at the rotation center, and the dark bird had a wing. 
So this is really only a threefold rotation center here, whereas this other one was a sixfold. So you have to be careful and look at look at the pattern, uh, you know, with a little bit more. Um, give it a wider look. Um, sometimes first rotation center will not be the smallest one. So just you know, see, hope. I mean, hopefully you'll you'll nail it right away. But sometimes you have to keep looking. Like uh, may, maybe there's another one. And sometimes right in the middle of the object, um, you might find one. In this case, uh, they look kind of similar. But this one where the beaks meet, you know, it, it's only a threefold center, and then this other one that I drew second here is the only one that's a, a six-fold center, although six birds are meeting at all of them. Okay, so anyway, so this is a P6, since there's clearly no um, reflection at all. And with, with the six-fold patterns, you only got two options. It's either P6 or P6M. Okay, what about this one. What about this is a grid uh, for an Islamic style drawing or tiling and it's a very popular one, actually. Um, the symmetry displayed here is actually much more popular in the Islamic, in the world of Islamic art and, and especially tilings than it is in the Western world, like in, in Western tilings. Uh, you have 120 degrees rotations. Can you actually put one in there? Mateus, would you mind? Just take out that um, color chalk and, and jot down a point that you saw that's 120. That's right. Yep. I'm going to make it just slightly bigger. Yep. Right there. That would be a 120. Absolutely. Okay. So that's good to see. However, got to keep looking because that's not the smallest one. Would it be 90? Uh, uh, was that Fiona? Yeah. Where do you think there would be a 90? I don't know. Can you draw yeah. it in there? Yeah. Let's see. I don't know if it's right, but I can do it. Oh, wait, that's the same one. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> All right. So 60, Mateos, put down 60. Where, where do you think there's a 60? Well, like inside the star we want, so the yep. star rotates on itself. That is correct. I'll draw it here. I That's that a 60. I forgot you could do yeah. that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, right smack in the middle. Uh, see, to me, that's like a real focal point. Um, and I think most people's eyes will kind of see the star in, in this thing, although they're really just squares, if you look at it, and, and some um, other quadrilaterals. Uh, but squares and, uh, I guess, rumbai. Squares and rumbai, all of this. Isn't that weird? Well, I guess all the blues are... All the blues are squares. Okay, so is that it? Or are there any other types of rotations? Well, 60 is the smallest it can go, right? Yeah, that, that is 
solid logic, Matty. That's good logic. So why would we even keep looking? 60 is going to be the answer, um, and you're right about that. However, let's assume for a second that I asked, I gave you a problem like this, and I would say, jot down one instance of each type of rotation. Let's just say that showed up on the test. So you would be looking for one more point, one more point, and it is not 90. It's There's another 120, right? Where would that be? That is technically the same point. Oh, yeah. is it? It's like the, the middle of the Mitsubishi logo. Um, I, I, I see the, the negative space here, the white space. Could you go um, on 80? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So where would that be? Yes. Yes, oh, yeah. beautiful. I don't know who did that, but that's where I was going. Oh, OK, so who, who did that? Who came through? Nayeli, perfect. Thank you. So that's a 180. That's a 180, and and that would cover your um, your three different rotation centers, and um, that's very cool. Um, now, that doesn't actually solve the problem that we have here because we still have to decide what the symmetry group is, and uh, so we have this other question. Second question: Is there a reflection? Yes. Yes, yes. This one's pretty easy uh, to answer because there's so many reflections. In fact, this pattern has the most reflection you can possibly have. We have reflections through all the points of all the stars and in between, too. Look at that. So there's no need to draw all these lines, but maybe I'll just do it this once just to illustrate that there's tons of uh, reflection lines. And all we were looking for is one. So this here then would be P6M. Now, you might be wondering, what do these letters and numbers stand for? The six is kind of easy to see. It's it's like in the reset groups where we had the number. It shows or it uh, it displays the um, rotational symmetry. So this is a six-fold pattern, and the M at the end stands for mirror. So like if you look at that uh, flowchart, you have two options for the 60 degree branch. There's the P6 and the P6M. Well, the P6M is the one with the mirror lines. Well, that makes sense. The only one that doesn't really make sense right now is the P. And I'm not going to get into it too deep, but 15 of these 17 patterns are uh, have what are called primitive cells. And that's why that's where the P comes from. And two out of fifteen, two out of seventeen, are what are called centered cells. So you'll see one of those centered things in um, in the, in the no rotation category. In fact, the very top one is a CM. And then there's another C one at the 180 degree branch at the end on the very right side, the CMM. So those are the only ones that start with the C, and the, all the other ones start with P. And it's the difference is, is technical. It's about the um, kind of the, the, what the repeating cell looks like, the, like the grid. Um, what kind of grid do you have here? And we're not going to get into it. But anyway, that's where the P comes from. 15 are primitive. Uh, to our center. Wow, 
this is boring compared to all the other ones. But it's so common, right? You see this all the time. So let's let's talk about this one. Boring as it may be, but it's still a repeating pattern on the plane. So it's a wallpaper pattern. And let's see, what do you think about rotations? Ninety. Ninety. I fully concur. So usually the focal points where your eye goes first are vertices and then midpoints. So these uh, would both be 90 degree reflections. Uh, I'm sorry, rotations. There is another rotation in there. Can you find it? 90 is the smaller one. Would it be 180? It would be. Can you uh, point where it might be? Would it, oh, would it be there? Uh, that, the that's a 90. I already put that one down. Yes. I, is that a mistake over here? Or is that where you, somebody meant to put a point? Put so, I meant to put yeah, that like, there. Uh, who was that? This is Maddie. I'm not sure if it's right. Maddie. There. Yes, yes. Thank you, Maddie. Uh, that's a 180. So in fact, at the center point of any vertex, I mean, any edge, uh, at the center of any edge is a 180 degree rotation. Do you see it? So uh, at the corners of the vertices, or, or at the vertices rather, is a 90. And at the center of the tile is a 90, but then right in the um, midpoint of the edge is a 180. Now, what do you think about, so clearly we're in the 90 degree, 90 degree branch. What do you think about uh, reflections? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes, big time. Yeah, yeah, this is, this pattern has lots of reflections, kind of like that P6M that we saw. So I'm just going to draw some lines here. Got vertical ones. We've got horizontal ones. In fact, in every grid line like this, we, we have reflections as well. Is that it? No. There's another one that mm -hmm. asks if the reflection are there reflections in lines which intersect at 45 degrees that's right and that's why yes. it's important that you draw at least a couple of these in there so you'll see so we also have these diagonal reflection lines and what that 45 degrees is referring to is this angle right here So you, you, if you want to, you can write on there on that flowchart a different way to ask that same question, which would, which would be, are there reflections in four directions? Vertical, horizontal, the two diagonals. Because if you have that, then the answer is yes. So this is a P4M. P4... M. And just like the previous one, we have a primitive cell, fourfold uh, rotational thing going on, and we have mirror lines. Now, the naming isn't. Sometimes you have mirror lines, but the thing doesn't have an M on it. Like you can see the P4G, for instance, um, which is kind of like a sibling symmetry to this one it has reflections but it ends in g it's because it has uh, uh, less reflections more glides okay wow all right p4m so this this boring old pattern that we see all the time it's actually a lot more interesting when you 
when you draw those uh, symmetrical markers on there. And theoretically speaking, they always exist. And see, those lay down the symmetrical laws or the symmetrical ground rules for how this pattern is going to repeat. And when we get back from break, I'll, I'll show you interesting pictures where um, we'll, uh, we'll kind of observe what kind of underlying grid do we have here. Uh, you know, we usually just see the pattern, and um, but there's a there's there's an underlying law there. there. These patterns are living within a certain symmetrical system, and if I tell you it's a P4M, then I'll know exactly how it's going to repeat. So uh, Mateus asked, are all wallpapers made using the system? I would say. Almost nobody who's making things like this, like in real life, knows about these symmetries. So you can make a wallpaper pattern or a tiling or whatever repeats and not know a darn thing about symmetry. Now, I think it would be more work that way because you're, you don't have a full understanding of, um, of the underlying symmetrical system. When you understand that system, which is what we're doing here, I think it, things are just going to make more sense to you. And it'll be easier to find uh, repeats or, you know, where, how a pattern might repeat and how, how you might make things interesting. So you're not constantly using the same patterns over and over and over. Uh, so you could introduce something that, you know, pops out a little bit because it's interesting looking. P4Ms are not interesting looking, by the way, usually. Uh, I don't want to put down a P4M because it's probably the most um, common pattern in the world. But let's face it, it's, it's a little uh, plain vanilla. Unlike this one, so this is a sidewalk um, that I took, uh, a sidewalk picture that I took in... Um, Helsinki, Finland, and it's got a little something going on. Now, I'm not sure if the maker of this understood the symmetry behind it, but I'm sure they knew, when they were laying these bricks down, they knew that they were doing something a little bit cooler than your regular 4444. So let's, let's talk about what's going on here, and I think this will be the last pattern for today. And um, obviously, the leaves and the um, whatever else is on there uh, are not really part of the pattern. But when you go out there and you keep your eyes open, you, you'll notice that, um, that uh, these things are really everywhere. And, and you're stepping on them constantly, and, and you're looking at them constantly. Um, and um, you know, they change a little bit. You can see over time it's grown some moss here in the in the edges, uh, along the edges. Like that's like a really strong moss line there. But then here it's kind of deteriorated somehow or there isn't so much space between the tiles here. But so it's not perfect in the sense that what we could do here with the computer. But uh, never mind that. This this is just uh, the way things occur out there. Um, I mean, this is a man-made pattern, but nature's kind of left its mark on it. Okay, so what do we think about the rotation of this thing? One eighty, Mateus, Maddie, you are. 180% correct. No, that can't be. You're 100% correct. Can you give me a rotation center? Can you pick a color and uh, put a rotation center there? Yep, that's one. Anyone else want to put another one?
did you somebody put down a purple spot here that's very good I did. that's a good one uh that was fiona good so here's this is essentially the same point you know that um you know halfway uh, the midway point of the vertical uh edge there so these are these are the uh, rotation centers like that um okay so we're at 180 and question goes is there a reflection so are there any reflection lines? Yes, yes, yes. Very good. So I'm going to just draw some reflection lines here. Now this is the kind of thing where you draw a line and it may not work perfectly because you know there's been some. Uh, there's a little mojo on that pattern. All right. Now, next question in the in that branch is: Are there reflections in two directions? And since I already drew the reflection lines, I think we can all see that yes, we have reflections in two directions. And then th oh yeah, this is the long one. This this is the one um, where you have to go four questions. Are all rotation centers on reflection lines so are all the rotation centers in this pattern yes on at least one of the reflection lines so it would be pmm okay now let's stop for a second anytime you have this decision to make uh, and that happens in the 180 branch, and it also happens in the 120 branch. You have the same question in the 120 branch. Stop and look at the picture again and think, could there possibly be another rotation center? So we'll try to be definitive before we you know call it a PMM and move on let's let's be definitive about it and and then if you conclude that okay yeah there are no, no other rotation centers every rotation center is on a reflection line it's a PMM however would you know in know. this case right My in turn. this case Mateos you want to put one in are you in the blue well, whoever did the blue, uh, that was Maddie. It, it, that, that's not correct. That's not <laughs> a rotation center. It's, it's, a, it's a good try. But you could see how if you started rotating around this point that you drew in blue, you have two things up here and only one thing here. That That's oh, not okay. going to have to see that, go yeah. all the way around. Yes, yes, this orange dot. And, and in fact, I'm going to draw a red dot right there. That is a rotation center, 180 degree rotation center. Who uh, who did the orange dot? Mateos was that? Fiona. Fiona. Perfect. Great. So, in at or I should say at the center of the rectangle that was formed by those reflection lines, you have these rotation centers, 180 degree rotation centers, and that, my friends, is what's going to make this guy a CMM pattern. Okay, so that's the difference. These have that extra rotation center in the middle of the grid or the or the cell. And yeah, that's a um, that's a CMM. That's that's pretty much as tough as it gets. Okay, I left it for last, just so you're not thinking uh, <laughs> uh, think, thinking that this is a cakewalk, because it, it isn't, but it's all doable, and we're gonna walk through a bunch of these patterns still, and we'll, we'll, we'll get there, we'll figure it out, don't worry.
we'll, we'll get there. So what I would like to ask of you over the next um, 12 days, I guess, is, um, well, one, if you have any homeworks that you didn't turn in, like projects, by the way, I forgot to assign you a border pattern project. That's that's my bad. I don't want to do one now because that's kind of lame. But I was hoping to assign a border pattern project that I, I just forgot. And my apologies. I was looking at your grades the other day, yesterday. It's like, wait a minute, where's the border pattern project? I didn't give you one. So you only have how many projects? You only have... Um, Let's see, uh, the circle and line one, the regular and semi-regular tilings, the Escher tilings, and the rosette pattern. So you, you currently have four projects. If you don't have tens for all of them, especially if you have a zero, please consider turning that in at some point because that'll um, bump your grade up and that would be good. Um, so. Anyway, but there will be no project due uh, uh, by April 6th, but just keep your eyes open. Keep that flow chart handy and just look around you when you're um, you know, outside or, or inside. I mean, we all have tons of patterns around the home uh, as well, you know, all kinds of linens and textiles and handbags and you name it. All righty. Um, any questions before we break? Oh, I wanted to mention that um, earlier, I think it was last class, you were talking about like the S thing. And um, I was talking with an advisor today who let me know that it is extremely likely, she said, that we are going to have the S option again, um, just yeah. so that everybody yeah. knows. Thank you. Thanks for that. So it's not a guarantee. So I don't start slacking yet, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Just Maybe don't don't ever <laughs> stop. Don't ever start slacking. But... Um, yeah, S is like a perfect uh, thing for any, if, if, if there are any seniors here. S is like the senioritis grade. Uh, you, right around this point in the semester, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do anything. It's my last semester. Well, as long as you pass, you can get an S probably. Now, you, you can't do all your classes with S's. I think there's a limit like two or three classes yeah, only. Or... Two. Was that? Last semester, they only let two. Two. OK, so yeah, so that's another another thing. Like if you slack on all your classes, and um, you might end up with you know three C's and two S's. <laughs> that's, that's not a great record. All right. Um, let's, um, people sending me emails. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I got them. I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go through everything. Um, all right. So I'll, I'll Aiden, you Tang, I'll, I'll write you back. Sorry about that. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Have a great break. Bye. Thanks so much. You too, Thank you, Professor. Have a good Bye. break. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Um, professor. Oh, 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 sorry about that. What? Yes? <laughs> no, sorry. Um, if you say that we're missing work or anything, would it show up as a zero on Blackboard or would you have yes. emailed us about it? I would not email necessarily. I might email at the end, but for now, just look in Blackboard, your grades. And uh, if there's a zero there, then that's, you, you got to, you know, you got to do that one. Okay, no, for, I have all mine are completed i just wanted to make sure that it wasn't just completed on mine yeah no i i wouldn't be like having you with you know emails uh it, you just got to check your grades okay sounds since good. they're so easy to check Alrighty. <laughs> have a good bye. spring break bye thanks you